we're at the Royal Observatory in Sussex. For scientist Margaret Penston, it's a good night for studying the stars. Using one of the observatory's big telescopes, Scientists have been probing the night skies for thousands of years, trying to solve the mysteries of the universe. But it's only in the last 300 years that they've had telescopes to help them. One of the biggest problems is finding out how far away the stars and planets are. That's the problem Margaret is helping to solve, and she depends on the telescope to help her. Before the telescope, views like this were impossible, and people had to make their observations with the naked eye. To find out how far away the stars and planets are, you need a record of the night sky. That's something the Chinese did more than 2,000 years ago. The next step was taken by the Greek scientist Hipparchus in the second century BC. He designed instruments and found ways of measuring the positions of the stars. His designs were so good, they were used almost unchanged for the next 1,500 years. Hipparchus also found a way of measuring the distance between the Earth and the Moon. He did it during a solar eclipse when the moon passes directly between the Earth and the sun. He was helped by a friend several hundred kilometers away. At the time of the eclipse, his friend saw the moon had completely covered the sun, but from where Hipparchus was, part of the sun could still be seen. This observation helped him measure the moon's distance from the Earth. But how? Well, he used a method you could try yourself, on, say, a nearby river. You need a landmark on one side, like a lamppost, and a pole to line up with it on the other side. From the pole, measure out a baseline along the river. When you're about 20 meters away, put in another stake. Continue measuring and put in a third pole about 30 meters from the first. Next, sight a line across the river from the lamp post to the pole at the 30 meter mark. You can make a line with a meter rule and then measure the angle between the sight line and the base line. Hundred and ten degrees. Do the same with the other marker. You can get a better idea of what they did in a diagram. Here's the pole opposite the lamp post. From here, they measured along the riverbank, putting a second pole in at 20 meters and a third at 30 meters. Next, they sighted a line to the lamp post on the other side from the 30 meter pole and measured the angle with the baseline. And they did the same with the second pole. To find the distance across the river, they drew a scale plan. A baseline with markers at 20 and 30 units, sight lines with angles of 110 and 105 degrees. The lines meet at the lamp post, the other side of the river. We'll leave you to work out its width. The measurements weren't accurate. Can you suggest where the biggest errors might have been? And how you could improve on the result? Now imagine the two posts represent the position of Hipparchus and his friend and the lamppost is the moon. If you know the angles, then you can calculate the moon's distance from the Earth. But look again at the two views. Each observer sees the moon in a slightly different position. 
This is called parallax, and scientists use this effect to measure the distance of the stars from the Earth. Today's scientists use telescopes to make these astronomical measurements. First, the telescope has to be lined up on the chosen star. Here, Margaret is setting the telescope at longitude. That's the direction right or left in the sky. Once the longitude is set, the telescope must be tipped to the correct angle in the up or down direction, the latitude. To find the star she wants, Margaret has to depend on the measurements of star positions like those that Hipparchus made 2,000 years ago. The star she's interested in should now be in view, give or take a fine adjustment. Instead of measuring the angles directly, as our young scientists did at the river, astronomers measure the position of a star relative to other stars which they know are much further away on a photographic plate. To help her identify the stars in this photograph, Margaret has a computer printout of the same part of the night sky. She now circles a whole group of stars. Although there's only one she's interested in, that's the one in the middle, the other more distant stars she needs as reference points. The position of each of the stars on the photograph must be very carefully measured. This is done on a specially designed instrument that can pinpoint a star's position very accurately indeed. But these are measurements of the stars from only one position. To work out the star's distance from the Earth, we need another photograph taken from a different position. Luckily for us, planet Earth travels round the Sun. So, if a photo was taken at this end of its orbit, we can get another photo when the Earth is on the other side of the Sun six months later. By comparing the two photographs, Scientists can see how the star in question seems to have moved, while the other more distant stars have not. From this measurement and those of the Earth's orbit, scientists can calculate the star's distance from the Earth using a computer, of course. This is a method that's only possible for the nearest stars. The next problem to solve is measuring greater distances in space. And to do that, scientists need to put a telescope on a satellite so it's above the Earth's atmosphere. It's a project called Hipparchus.